Welcome back folks. Today we're jumping back into subwoofers and specifically we're going to talk about the Stark Sound SW15. This is a 15 inch sealed subwoofer. Now you might have heard of this uh, from some other channels. So Shane did a video on it, really good video. You should check that out. Um, Audioholics did a review of the SW15 and the SW12. Um, it's got a bunch of measurements there. You should check that one out too. But I wanted to talk about this one um, because it's kind of special in a way, right? It kind of changes the way that some people can access home theater or even like media rooms and that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big $100,000 build. It could be, you know, maybe a $8,000 media room or $12,000, $15,000 home theater. But it kind of changes the way that you think about the finances and performance in that kind of room. And uh, that's all due to a sale that they've got going on. Now, I want to talk about that, and then we're going to look at the measurements, because if the subwoofer doesn't subwoof, <laughs> if it sucks, uh, then it, it's worthless. But I've looked at it, and it's absolutely not worthless. The response on this thing is pretty good. And you can look at the, the other uh, pieces of content uh, for more information there. But the sub performs really well. But what's really cool is that it performs really well and it also is at a really great price. So to get started, let's go ahead and jump in and I'm, I'm gonna REW this thing. I'm gonna show you what the in-room response looks like. Um, and this is the same way that I measure every subwoofer here. So you can take these measurements for the sub that I'm about to do and compare it to any of my older videos where I use the same methodology and that's pretty much everything in the last year or so. And you can see how this thing stacks up apples to apples against the other subwoofers. It's the same position, the same microphone, uh, the same source, the same everything, right? So you can see exactly what this thing looks like in my room. Um, and this is gonna give you kind of a real world example. So this isn't like a, a flat, plain outdoor or anechoic, you know, any of these pristine kind of measurements. This is a, in a room, in a house that might be similar to your house, how does this thing actually work? We get a little bit of room gain in there and you get to see, uh, you even get to see the, the warts of the room too, because there's dulls and all kinds of stuff like that. But it's something that you can kind of say, oh, all right, this is this is what it's really like in a room that's about 14 and a half by 14 and a half by eight foot tall, um, not a big room. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And then after, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I think this might be something that you really wanna pay attention to. Now it's time for the fun stuff. That's right, REW. So um, just to level set a little bit, uh, recording is in room, mics at the main listening position. It's about nine feet away from the subwoofer itself. And I always record with exactly the same settings and the same location, right? So the sub is gonna be uh, at zero phase. Um, it's gonna have no crossover injected anywhere. So the setting on the sub will be at the maximum setting. Um, and uh, the volume typically will be set right at the middle for the subwoofer. And you know, that obviously will vary from subwoofer to subwoofer, subwoofer but I put it in the middle um, so that we have at least some point of reference. And uh, from there, I go in and I start recording. I set the volume at 21 on my processor, on the Acurus, and uh, we grab a measurement. And this is what the sweep looks like um, at the 21 volume setting um, on the SW15 measured as I described. Now, some things to be aware of, uh, this null, this null and all this crazy stuff over here, this is all room, right? So if I went uh, and did a near field recording, you know, this would have a nice little, little curve to it, right? Uh, it wouldn't have all this weird room stuff. But for me, this is a practical application, right? So I'm not trying to figure out um, you know, empirically what this subwoofer does, I want to practically understand what this subwoofer can do in a room. So, uh, you know, obviously it'll be different in your room, uh, but this is, I think, indicative of kind of typical rooms. The room's about 14 and a half by 16. Um, there's a steer wheel on one side. It's pretty sealed. Um, but, you know, I, I think that other folks will have something similar in their basement. So let's get into what this subwoofer is doing. So uh, you know, the first thing to look at is, um, you know, with uh, the room gain that we get, and this is not in a corner, this is in the center of the front wall right under the screen. Um, you know, we're, we're only seeing at 10 hertz, we're down, you know, 10 decibels-ish from the very top of what the subwoofer is doing where it peaks out, 
you know, uh, but in this 30 to 40 range. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's pretty darn decent, right? Um, especially for a subwoofer that costs 500 bucks. I mean, this thing is about as inexpensive as you could expect. Well, let's go ahead and step through and go up to where things get squirrely because things always get squirrely as you increase the volume on a sub. And that's, that's kind of what we want to find out, right? Okay, uh, we go up three decibels and these are all going to be in three decibel increments and things look fine here. Uh, you know, uh, it's moving on up another three decibel increment. Everything's still looking fine. Uh, three more decibels. Uh, and that was, this is now at the 30 volume setting on the processor, which is meaningless uh, because I don't have it uh, calibrated any specific way. Another three decibels, we're at 33. Uh, another three decibels, we're at 36. Another three decibels, and we're at 39. And now this is where things get a little interesting for the sub, right? So um, we can see that the amp is starting to say, okay, we're going to put the brakes on stuff. Um, and almost every commercial subwoofer you buy is going to have some type of brakes that, that are applied. Sometimes they apply it at a certain point. And this one you know, is applying it around this 21, 21 and a half uh, hertz range to kind of tamp things down. Um, this is not compression across the board. So this isn't subwoofer distress. This is this is the amp saying, hey, let's, let's slow down. Um, some amplifiers will apply this across the entire spectrum. So you'll keep turning the volume up, but the subwoofer doesn't get louder and that's just limiting in the sub. So this is limiting in the sub as well. Um, and let's uh, let's just validate this. So I'm going to go up another three decibels. And what I would expect to see is everything else to get taller at about the same rate, uh, but this to, to stay kind of where it's at. And that's exactly what we see. So uh, you know, there's a pretty wide Q here. It looks like it's centered at about 21 hertz. And I don't know what the, the Q number would be uh, for this, but that's how wide the DSP um, is applied and, and it's, you know, from 16 Hertz all the way up to 27 Hertz, maybe, maybe even it's like 30. So yeah, but it's probably 15 to 30, um, is, uh, is the, the setting in the DSP inside of that amp. It's not adjustable. So this isn't something you can go in and change, but that's exactly what's going on. But, um, you know, if we look here, um, we, you know, we're doing a hundred decibels, uh, at, at my MLP and we're down 10, so that's very consistent. Um, I would expect that we could probably go another three. We could probably get this thing even up to 105 decibels if we wanted to push it, but then you get a really big dip here, and you know that's that's not what you want to see in your sound. So I think, you know, realistically playing stuff back, this is kind of where uh, the top end of this would be. Now, this is with one subwoofer. Uh, and the great thing about this sub is that it's so inexpensive on sale that you would never have just one. Um, so if you go up to two units, that's going to give you another three decibels. So, you know, this will be up to 100 and 103 and then you'd be, you know, like at 92 or something like that at 10 hertz. Um, and then if you go up to four, then you're going to get something like six decibels all things being equal, meaning that they're all spaced out and they're the same distance from the MLP and that kind of thing, or they're all stacked up on top of each other. Now in my room, if I did four, I would put two in the front and then probably two near field in the back. So really I'd probably be getting a bump of closer to eight decibels. Um, so, you know, we're going to be up to, you know, getting close to 110 decibels, uh, you know, at the whole range of, I don't know, 28, to 50 hertz well all, well actually all the way through um because this is all room so you know you'd be way up here with four of these bad boys and that's like two thousand dollars which is super super affordable and then down here at 10 hertz you know you're going to be up like 97 decibels i mean that's ridiculous i mean that's that's a lot of 10 hertz bass for not a lot of money i mean if you go look at you know, some of the big monster ported 18s and 21s and stuff, you know, you're looking at $4,000 a unit to get in. Um, and that's just one. And then you get bad response at most of your seats and just get it one. Um, this is a, uh, this is pretty compelling. Now, obviously if you're going to be looking at spending $4,000 on a subwoofer, this is not something you'd ever consider buying anyway. Um, so for folks that do want to have some crazy good base, 
um, that are more on the budget side of the house. Um, this is this is cool. And, you know, they're really small boxes, too. Uh, so pretty darn uh, affordable and pretty darn uh, space conscious. So, yeah, everything seems to check out on the measurements here. Um, you know, I think they claim like down to 14 hertz uh, on the on the the specifications. And, you know, if you look, it's peaking out, you know, 95, 96 decibels and then down around 14. It starts it does start dropping off in my room, you know, 15 ish. So, you know, that the, the claim, I don't think it's specified what, you know, plus or minus what, but that's a pretty reasonable claim i think um you know i think if uh, if you didn't have room gain this would this curve would go down pretty pretty hard right there um, but we do have room gain and everyone will have room gain so you need to consider that uh in uh, in the mix here so here are the measurements and uh let's uh, close out with some final thoughts okay you've seen the goods and this thing it, it puts up the goods right i mean that, that's just one um, and that's really the magic, right? That was just one, but these things can be had on sale right now. I don't know about other times during the year for $500 a pop, right? So if you buy two, that's a thousand dollars. I think the sale is actually BOGO, buy one, get one free, thousand dollar retail price. At a thousand dollars, man, you know, I don't think, <laughs> let's, let's pass. But at $500, two for a thousand, this thing turns into kind of a champion for pretty much everybody like for 99 percent of all rooms out there this becomes something that you want to consider for a number of reasons okay one um if you're gonna put two thousand dollars into subwoofers in maybe a fifteen thousand dollar system something like that for this two grand you can get four of these guys and if you look at the measurements and you know i didn't push that thing it's, it's got more in the tank right um, but if I went from one to four, that would add another six decibels across the board, right? So you add a second one and that kind of doubles everything, amplification, cone size, all this stuff. That gives you about three decibels. And then you double that again, go from two to four, that gives you about another uh, three decibels. So you're like all in six decibels higher than what's there. And you saw the 10 Hertz res uh, results, right? And you pump that up another six decibels. That's pretty crazy for six thousand dollars or two thousand dollars and for that two grand since you've got four units you place these around your room you're starting to smooth out your base so you're not saying okay i want to get super huge base i'm going to take two grand to buy the biggest single ported subwoofer that i can get my hands on and you know some people go that route and like okay i'm going to get an 18 or maybe a really cheap 21 or something like that um, and, uh, and shove it in a certain spot, single spot in the room. And then, you know, the response is kind of what the response is. Um, and you know, it can get loud and that's what ported does. If you can get one subwoofer, then you absolutely should get a ported box, right? Because you're chasing after those decibels and that's what ported is made for. It's made for extra decibels, um, but you get a huge box and it's kind of unsightly. And anyway, it's not, it's not an elegant solution like sill subwoofers are. Um, so, like I said, for that two grand, you get four of these, you can put them all over the room, and then you can really get into tuning your environment um, to make sure you have even response across all your seats, right? Um, so that, that's a huge benefit. And then if you're in a smaller space or you don't wanna put that much money in, you can buy two of these for a thousand bucks, right? And get three decibels on top of what you saw in the video before, which is super impressive. And then you also have two of them that you can move around and smooth out that bass response. I think two of these is really great for any TV environment. I mean, that's a huge amount of bass for just a kind of a, a media room. And four of them is probably more bass than 98% of the people in the world need. Now, you know, if you're like a super hardcore home theater, um, this probably isn't gonna be something that you're looking at anyway, right? So you're gonna go out and build a couple of GSG Devastators and then some MBMs and then maybe some behind the screen subs, or you're gonna go out and buy uh, some kind of crazy JTR double 21 closure, or you're gonna go pick up a 24 inch from Stereo Integrity, which I can't wait to get my hands on one of those. I mean, that's that's like a, a dream subwoofer. But if you're looking at those, you're not gonna look at these SW15s anyway. It's kind of a different marketplace. So for the niche where the SW15 plays, it's absolutely astonishing. And if you need just one of them, find a friend that needs one, buy them, and you get one for $500, right? Um, I think the Speedwoofer 
is a, it's a 10 inch and it's a great sub, but it's 10 inches and it costs, I think like $425. When you're looking at 425 versus 500 for this 15, you're in a different ballpark. I mean, that's, you know, that's $75. It gets you a heck of a lot of sub. Um, so, you know, that's, that's really what I wanted to touch on. Now, if you want to get into more of the bells and whistles of the sub, uh, maybe go check out Shane's video. He talks all about it. Um, you know, basically it's, it's just a regular subwoofer. It doesn't have like a cool app like you might find on SVS subs. You know, it's 15 sealed. It's got a plate amp on the back. You know, it's got XLR in and XLR out. It takes RCA. It's got crossover phase. It can auto sense power all the basic kind of things that a subwoofer does. Um, and you know, for a $500 price point, I, I wouldn't expect any extravagant kind of stuff like DSP or anything built in. And it doesn't have anything like that, right? It just acts as a subwoofer. It does what it's supposed to do. It does it very proficiently and it does it at a great price point and it can absolutely change your home theater or media room experience. So check it out. Um, if you're generous, use the link down below, click on that, buy two, four, six of these things. I mean, just imagine six, you take, four, put around the room, put two uh, near field behind your seating. Oh my God. And, and that's what, three grand? That's crazy. The, the price point is just absolutely absurd. Um, but anyway, like I said, check them out. Um, if you have some, I'm interested to see what you think about them. Um, I've only got the one to play with and I would much rather have four to play with, but I've only got the one. Uh, so I haven't been able to experience what it would be like to have all of those here. Um, but I can tell you right now, it's a compelling offer at a compelling price point, And I think it's something you should consider when you're thinking about stepping up to big boy base. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, all that stuff. See you guys in the next one.